Hey, what's good guys? I am Moni the Craftologist and today I want to show you how I create a template from scratch for a bottle opener that I will be personalizing by sublimating on that bottle opener. I will be using Canva Pro to remove the background on the images that I will be using for that bottle opener. I also will be showing you how I remove the remainder of some of those backgrounds on Silhouette Studio and do some other magic on Silhouette Studio business edition in order to achieve the sublimation that I want. Surprisingly, I do not use any cutting machines, so no Cameo, no Cricut. I just use scissors to cut out my sublimation paper. And of course, I also use a sublimation printer for that. I am using a Equal Tank 2720 for sublimation. So it's not even a really expensive uh, sublimation machine. It's pretty much one of the very basic and smaller ones. So stay tuned, watch this video, and by the time I am done, hopefully you like my video and you share it and subscribe to my channel. So once I have taken the picture of whatever it is that I am trying to sublimate, in this case, a bottle opener, I send that to my email and then before I open it in Silhouette Studio, I go to Canva. So what I do is I go to Custom Size, and you can also design in Canva if you like, but I find it's harder in Canva. So what I do is I go to custom size, I go create a design and then I go down to custom size and then I go to inches. I have my bottle opener. It's about seven inches wide. And it's a little bit less than 1.75 inches. So I inches on my keyboard. But I would okay, just go to so this is about the size. Files. Look now, in my what I want, files, my computer files for that image, whatever I have it named, and then upload it. In this case, I had already up the, uploaded them. So I'm just going to choose my image. And I'm going to choose one, this one. this background square okay however I don't want any of if the you surroundings look closely, on me so I will go to right edit image here. BG remover that's background side. remover now if I were to do that and here it I will go to erase I would try to go with the smallest brush that I can go and I would enlarge the image and then I would try to eliminate all that area however again it gets really complicated and even with a touch screen and a pen it will still be pretty hard to eliminate that so what i like to do is i'm gonna cancel that i'm gonna leave my image as is then i want to save this image so i will go to share i would go to download i would make my image tr with a transparent background and then I would leave it at PNG because I'm working with a picture, so I want the best quality um, for the image. This should always be over 2,000. Um, the bigger the image, the more the pixels. I'm going to leave it to what it was at 2,000 because mine's just going to be fairly small, so I don't need a super large image. If I needed a super large image, I want to make sure that both of these are over 1,000. And then I press download. Once I press download, um, it's going to go into my downloaded files. I had already downloaded this one, so I'm not going to do it again but I just wanted to show you guys what you have to do in order to download that. Okay, so I'm going to close this. My next step will be to upload an image of my bottle opener onto Silhouette and I have to place uh, something behind it or underneath it so that my lines and dots from my healing mat do not show up in the photo. Once I take the picture, I have to upload this image. So I will be texting it to myself on my iPhone because I took the picture with my iPhone. So I open my messages and I send a message with the pictures attached to my email and then I open it in my emails. If you scroll up, depending on which uh, service you have, you're going to download that. I'm going to download both of them. I actually only need one of them though, so I'm just going to download that first one. I go to properties here it is so I'm gonna go to my folders 
go to downloads. Here's my image. Opener. Here it is. I am going to name it uh, Bottle. I close my files because that's the one I'm going I to use for my template. And I'm down going to, to select. Press OK. I had another image. This one I can actually delete because that one did not work. So now I am in Silhouette Studio. Before I begin anything, I want to make sure that I set up my page. So I am using a Cameo 4. I'm going to leave this at auto, auto manual. My mat size is 12 by 12 and I will be using a letterhead, so a eight and a half by 11. That is I the am size going of to make my sure. sublimation sheet, so I want to work within that those uh, boundaries. Now, even though it is eight and a half by 11, I still have had my registration marks in that first page that I go down this to the bottom red one. That's my cutting border, so anything cutting that I am going to cut with my silhouette see machine how that has to be within that area. Now, shows I up. can use That's, my cutting machine or I can I, cut it out by hand. I don't need, if I don't have a cameo, I don't need to use the cutting border as long as I use the printing border. might be cutting mine out with my cameo because I do have one. You don't need a cameo to use Silhouette Studio. I have the business edition. You can use the basic edition. Um, I just downloaded the business edition because it's easier for me to download since as I an don't SVG like to save PNG my or any other type of file except for a studio file. Instead of so just that's the reason files. why I, I do just not believe went ahead that and a little the more for the business edition. It may cost a little more, however, it is a one-time payment, so you don't have to worry about ever having to pay that amount again, and you can use it up to three machines, I believe, um, up to three computers. So that's a computer, um, and uh, I believe you can use it on an iPad. I know that they do not have an app to use it on a phone. Anyway, now that I set up my page, I want to set up my registration mark, so I have to make sure that it is on. My registration marks tells me that I my image has to be within those registered um, mark areas. Now, the length of those registration marks that I the can play with, lines, however, will if be you thicker, go too small so that the machine the can see it better. Cameo may not um, detect that if you are link, um, well, that's using how a cameo. Much I also like to my inward inward to the sheet do you want those registration marks? Anything that I those borders have to be within that I the size of your paper. Has to be within those registration marks. Cheap. Anything and that is smaller paper than what you set up. And if you are using a smaller will paper, not then you need to change it. By, See, like right here, here's a five by eight. Right here, here's a five by seven. So if you're using a five by seven, then you change that to a five by seven. Don't try to change cheat the system because it will mess things up for you if you're trying to cut. Okay. Anyway, now that I have set all of that up, I can start adding my images. My first image that I want to add my bottle opener. So what I do is I go to file up here. First image that I want to merge, add that I want to work with is and that this is what I had named it, bottle uh, template. opener template or temp. So I press OK and there it is. Now. I am going to 
you if might I'm press going on to the play image with this only picture, once with my mouse. That's just going to be to make the image larger Try to bring it down. That's not going to work for me. Only However, the pink and the white. If I click on the image twice, I get the gray squares on each corner. Those are the ones that I want to work with. So I grab each one and I bring it in. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I try to make them as equal as possible. It doesn't have to be. That I will be using. I just want to get the pink and the white only. I think that's good enough. Now, I want to eliminate this background. I also want to eliminate inside here. So in order to do that, I am going to look for the butterfly, which is the and trace. I'm going to do the trace by color, but I'm going to do it within the white. I am going to click on the now. droplet. The droplet there are is some the trace areas by color. that are not highlighted. So once so I, I click to the droplet, with the threshold, the tolerance, I am going to go ahead and bring the tolerance up, drag it over it till it highlights most of my image. Now, if you go too far, it's going to highlight everything. So you can't go too far in. But I want to do it where it gets just the right amount where I feel that everything is covered. I think that's good. So I will go ahead and then press trace and detach. What that does by pressing trace and detach is it takes out all that area. I still have the area inside. So I will go ahead and do the trace by color again. I will click on the area and I will put the tolerance up. Now, I want to see if something else works. So, because I have this side too, I have this side and this side. If I put all area, it may grab both sides and it does. However, you don't want to go too far in because again, it starts tracing other things that should not be there. So you grab as much as possible. So I will go ahead, trace by color. I will click on that. And I'm going to green and I'm going to make my image tolerance so that I can see better. And I feel like doing one We're at a off. time rather than doing them both. So I think that's good. Right there. I can also use the arrows. So we'll try to pick up as much of it as possible. Once I see that it starts going outside of that area, which it did there, I'm going to bring it back in. I'm going to hit trace and detach again. And that is going to take that circle out. Click on it, delete it. I don't think anything was left inside of that area. I will do this side now. Again, I can do trace by color. I do want to show you something else though. You can also do magnet trace. Delete that. With the magnet, it's a little bit harder. However, sometimes it can be a little bit more accurate. As long as you're just following the area down, you're okay. If you accidentally jerk it, if I were to move it, too fast then it's going to get an area outside of the area that you want so try to make sure to stay within the border and not to jerk your mouse too fast if you go nice and slow it gets everything Now I did that. 
I'm going to go to trace and detach. And there it is. Okay, so you and have your options. You can do and trace by color, duplicate or the, the match. Again, the magnet is a little harder. However, it picks up a little better. I believe it's this one, the one that looks replica panel. Kind of looks like a star. Click there. Now these are to duplicate. I could have duplicate down. I want to go to mirror. Then you have you have rotate as well, but I want to go to mirror. And I want to actually here. Let me just show you what happens. This is my image. I want to mirror. So I can just mirror down. If I just want it, like if I'm sublimating on this side, and then I just want to turn it this way to sublimate, then I would do that. However, if I don't want it to be upside down, and I just want to flip it this way, then I will go ahead and use one of the ones that are on the side. So I can do this. And as you can see, my holes are gonna be on opposite sides. And I think that's the one that I want to use. <clears throat> so now that I have this, I had already previously downloaded images. some images that I want to use so for I the background. Here and go to JPEG. So I am Press going okay. to go ahead and There it is. So I want to click on that. This is the picture that I want to use for one of them, this area here. So what I will do is I will move this picture to the back. So send to back. I want to make sure that I grab, let me see, this house right here. I want it to be somewhere in this area. So I will bring this one down to make sure that house comes out in the picture. And then what I do is I click on this image, click on the image in the back, and I have to bring The one with the rectangle and the circle. I'll bring that one up and then I will go to crop. And it crops that photo and here's the house that I wanted. Okay. Then for this one, oops, for this one, I want another image. I am going to go to merge. I think I have it under off-road. It is a JPEG. So I will look for that JPEG. Now, if you don't remember, then you're just gonna have to search however or wherever. It's actually this one right here. Um, I want to set this to the background. And I want to make sure that those Jeeps do not come out in the image. However, I do want to make sure that some of that water comes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this image smaller to where it fits the length. I'm sorry, the width of the bottle opener. Auto opener. Click on both the image. And then, so here I want to bring it move down. This one out of the way. I get those I jeeps can out of the way. Do this, and then go to crop. And there it is. So I have the water, and I have some of that sand. Now this is not gonna stay like this. I need to add some jeeps on here. Um, but I did notice right here. It eliminated part of 
my bottle opener. So I am going to go back and undo this. Oh, you see how I did not stay. So I need that image to stay within, or I need the bottle opener to stay within that image so that nothing gets cut out. So I will go ahead and do it again. I'm gonna click both of them. I will go back to the modification and crop. So now I have them both. I want to bring in some other images that I had downloaded. Actually, the background image that I, I'm sorry, not the background image, the Jeep image that I had downloaded into Canva and removed the background, I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna show you how I remove the rest of that background. So I'm gonna go to Merge. I'm going to enlarge that Jeep as much as possible, just so that I'm I can going to see Jeep. it. I can also zoom in, but I'm I still want to enlarge Jeep. Jeep so that I see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it this way. And it's okay that it's... Remove the backgrounds of it right now. And then I am going to bring it back in here and place it in here. And it's okay that it's off but because you look I'm really going... closely. Me large, get closer up, bring this Jeep this way. Okay, so if you look really closely, you can see these areas right here that's part of the wall from the background of, of this image. I want to remove all of that, the darker gray. And then this right here so I am going to go ahead and again I am going to choose the one that looks like the butterfly which is the trace box I'm gonna to go to trace by color I'm gonna click on trace by color so click on the droplet and then the trace by color and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click on that and put all area so that it grabs all that area now see what happens so I can't do all area, so I'm just going to go ahead and put single area. And I think that did a great job of grabbing just that area. Let me see if it could grab a little more. Nope. So I just want that area. All of that area. So I go ahead and press trace detach. That's going to detach this area and then I select it, move it out the way and delete. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same again, trace by color. I'm gonna do this area right here. Now, I think that if I go to all area, it's gonna do all of the windows. And at this point, I could just move the Jeep because there's gonna be a lot of speckles on there that I want to get rid of. Once I see that so it I starts going Jeep into down. the Jeep. I may have to go in some and I'm going to delete all those speckles. See how you can barely see them. However, they're there. So I wanna go ahead and grab all of those little speckles I'm going to delete all those speckles. I'm gonna go over it one more time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think I'm good. Move this out the way. Check if there's any speckles here. Nope. All right. I can do the magnet. So that's actually looking really good. There is one more area that I want to do and that is that window. So I'm 
Let's try it again. It's okay. I'm just going to delete, delete the flag. I'm going to try to move this straight up. It's very pixely, so it's trying to grab a bunch of small pixels. That's good. Trace and detach. So maybe I should just move this. Delete. And took the flag, but that's okay. We can always add a flag, but it you're not gonna tell because it's so small anyway. And I think that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and move out. I'm going to close this. And I think it looks good enough. This guy is gonna be smaller, much smaller. And we are going to put him over by the beach and check out. Now you can see to the other side through those windows. And I will show you what I mean. I come with this way. See? You can see the sand between the rims. You can also see where we still have some more through the windows. To add down here, I am going to add another Jeep image. So I'm going to go to merge. Going right. I'm going to go to two. Okay. Not sure where that went. There it is. It's the same Jeep. Just different rims. Let me see. I think I have another image of the back of this Jeep. Merge three. Okay. And it's up here. Now down. I need to group these. This one I'll probably together. make a bit smaller. So I am going to group selected shapes and that should flatten it. I want to I'll do the same here. font in here. Go to group. Because they make cuter font. So I'm going to delete this. So now I'm going to grab this one. I am going to take off this. I'm going, going to, to get some text. To Jeep. Name this Tommy. I do know that he likes red. So I'm gonna change these to red. It's gotta be something like this. Share, download, transparent background, download, and there it is. So I will come back into Split, and I will go to File, Merge, nope, should not be that there. one. And here is the 
font merge. to see if I press send what will and happen. I have to select everything mm -hmm. there you and go. go to group I want to take out that trace do you see that trace on there I need to take out the trace. So I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to ungroup again. I'm going to ungroup again. Take this cheap out. Click on it. Okay, so I had to pause the video for a little bit while I figured out how to delete the red lines that were around the Jeep, and now I have figured it out. So I am going to go ahead and group all of this together, and I will show you how to do that too. So let me group these back together. Now, I have to ungroup these because I want to show you what I am talking about. So let me go ahead and zoom in on this and see if you're able to see it. Maybe I have to zoom a little bit more. Okay. So not sure if you can still see that. All right, I think that's good enough. There is around the Jeep, there is a red line going around it and I don't want that to print out. So I am gonna show you, I'm gonna zoom back again, zoom out, I mean, and I'm going to ungroup all of this so that I can show you how to remove those lines and both Jeep on this uh, image have them. So let's see. So you have two Jeeps, both of them have it. So I want to ungroup all of this. So I went ahead and I selected the item. I'm going to close this for a second. So I am going to ungroup. Hopefully that moves it. Nope, it's still grouped. It only ungrouped my words. I'm gonna ungroup again. Which one is it? So I'm going to touch this one again, ungroup again. And now those Jeeps are ungrouped. Okay. I'm gonna bring this image up to see if you can see those lines now. Okay, so you can barely see them. However, you know, someone with a good eye, you're able to see that. So what you do is you click on the image that has those red lines around it. You go to Object, Modify, and then you're going to put Detach Lines. Then you, once you um, unselect it, and then you select just the top one and you can see the red line that I was talking about. So you select those red lines and delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the other Jeep before I place them back. So going to object and then modify, but you, I think you can also do it on this side. So I'm gonna select it. Um, here is my modify button. It's the one with the rectangle in the circle. 
So I click on that and I go to detach lines. I unselect everything. Let me close this. I move the top Jeep and there goes the line. So those are the trace lines that remained. I want to delete those so that they don't come out on the images. Sometimes the words may have them too because my words are in red. They're not going to have them. Mm. This one is okay. I don't like the way that font came out so I might fix that font. I might just delete that and add a different font. So I'm going to zoom out and move these back in there. have it I need to zoom out a little more and then I'm going to select all of this and group it by grouping that'll all print out together just the same way it moves okay ungroup select it so I went ahead and did that I want to delete I have to ungroup again. this Let's see. oh there it goes didn't have to ungroup just have to deselect and then select it all. So I'm gonna put this here. I am going to delete this and I am going to add some font myself. So I'm going to add the font here. I'm going to reduce the font size because it's way too big right now. I'm gonna put it at 36. And I am going to select another type of font here there it goes Tommy I don't know why it's not I actually like this one a lot. Maybe I can enlarge it. I'm gonna select all my letters. I'm gonna go up here, choose that, and I. Group all of that. I like that. Need to move this Jeep inward. I think that's good. I'm going to put those watermarks back on. The signs are in the middle. File. Okay, Print. so I've... This should be showing me. I need to mirror this, so hopefully... Okay, so I go to print. that oh yeah i'll press cancel because i have it set up to where it asks me my preferences so i do want to mirror it it's a normal design i want portrait i want presentation matte i want high color So everything on this page is fine. I'm going to go to more options. Mirror image is fine. I'm going to put letter here. Normal mirror. I'm going to go to advanced. Ch select okay. Adobe. And I will hit apply. Two, and print. Okay. And everything else looks good. Just cutting around them with my scissors. So here is my supplement as close paper. as possible to the edge. Cut around those.
what I do is when I take place it down. down. I'm gonna try right to there. line that up just like that. And then tape it down right here. I do one side first and then I do the other side. I make this under my press and I press it for I believe it's 40 seconds at 380 degrees I'm using a sub paper for this I probably don't have to put so much tape. Then, did I tape but it onto the so desk? I did. And then I wrap it. It's okay. Inside, I, I do is I put it, when I'm pressing it, I put it this way. So that it presses onto that paper. And I will set that up. Okay, so my temperature is almost where it needs to be. Go ahead and put this in. That is done. Now we will proceed to that's done. Cutting the opposite side, and we do the same thing. Cut around. Tape does not damage the I designs. don't recommend that you use so you the don't same have butcher to worry paper. about that. If you do, use the other side of the butcher paper. You change Let me because check my if Amazon it has store. The purpose of the butcher paper is to suck up some of that saturation so that it doesn't get everywhere else. And if you happen to have marks on your butcher paper that can get on your design so my opposite side looks clean so i'm going to use my opposite side go ahead and stick the so again, I put your paper at 300 and it doesn't matter where, degrees, as long as it's all for 40 under the seconds. Iron. My bottle opener is already inside. Got to 380 seconds, so I will go ahead and push down. So, turned my and sublimation machine off. This is gonna be really hot, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I do wanna turn it around so I can remove that tape while it cools down. Maybe I didn't have it all the way Oh no! Okay, 
Okay, so it is almost done and we will try it again. Okay. Hopefully that I'll actually to came out decent to the exact because when I put it back down, ghosting, it was in the same spot. So it doesn't look like there was any ghosting. If there was, you can't see it. That looks really, really good. I'm holding it with tweezers because they are metal, so they do get super, super okay. hot. So that is the way it looks on this side. I do not recommend that you try touching this at any really time with your bare feet. There was no ghosting even though I messed up and I took it off and it still wasn't done. There was absolutely no ghosting on it. So it looks really, really good. And then this was the first side that we did. The ink looks very well. The colors are very vivid. And I am about to go make another one. Thanks for watching. I showed you how to get rid of background on Canva as well as get rid of some background on Silhouette Studio, how to upload your own templates, how to create your own templates, how to crop the images, different images on there, and even how to troubleshoot the lines that we had to detach so thanks for tuning in for watching my youtube video and stay tuned for the next one these are the results of my bottle opener hopefully you like this video and if you enjoyed it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up share subscribe to my channel thanks for watching